Hello, hello! So today we're going to be taking a look at aircraft icing and learn about the dangers that ice poses to an aircraft. So I'm planning to cover quite a lot in this video, but first let's look at what ice does to an aircraft which makes it so dangerous. Now if you haven't seen my previous video on how a wing produces lift, you might want to check that out quickly, because understanding lift is a key part to understanding the effects of ice. So we know that wings produce lift because the air flows around the smooth, curved surface of the wing. Well, as a plane flies through icing conditions, water begins to freeze on the leading edge of the wing. The longer the plane flies through these icing conditions, the more ice begins to form, and you start to see a layer of ice protruding or extending out from the leading edge of the wing. Now the danger that this creates is that the surface of the ice is not smooth. So as air hits the front of the wing and hits that layer of ice, it becomes turbulent. Because the airflow is not flowing smoothly over the rest of the wing, it produces less lift. Because there's less lift, that means that the plane could stall at a higher airspeed, or it could stall more quickly than normal. Some other effects are increased aerodynamic drag from the wing and reduced maneuverability because the wings are working less efficiently. Some people also say that ice adds weight to the plane, but the weight change is quite small and it's not a major factor. Now, I use the wing here because the effects of icing are most noticeable on the wings, however there are other parts of the plane that can suffer from icing. For example, the engines are at risk. Both propeller and jet engines risk gathering ice, either on propeller blades or the fan blades inside the engine. The windscreen of a plane is particularly dangerous for obvious reasons. I mean, imagine trying to drive a car with the windscreen iced over. The pitot tube is a critical component which can experience icing. The pitot tube is responsible for giving the pilot a speed reading, so if this instrument fails to perform properly for any reason, that is a significant danger to the pilot. Ice can also gather on the radio antenna on the aircraft, which leads to poor quality radio communication. And the last significant area is ice gathering on the nose of the aircraft, where a weather radar is generally located on larger planes. If there is a layer of ice, that will affect the performance of the weather radar, meaning that pilots may get inaccurate data. So now we know the effects of ice on a plane, what can be done to prevent ice from becoming an issue? Well, there's two techniques which are used together. You have de-icing and anti-icing. Now they sound very similar, but there are differences. De-icing is a reaction procedure. This means that ice has already gathered on the surface of the plane and something needs to be done to get rid of it. Anti-icing is a proactive procedure. It's a system that a pilot can enable if they suspect that they will encounter icing conditions during the flight. So let's look at some of the methods used for de-icing and anti-icing. Some of these methods do cross over and can be used in both a reactive and proactive sense. So during the winter season, while a plane has been sat on the ground, there's a good chance that snow or ice has gathered on the surface of the plane. Now there's several methods to remove it. For larger aircraft, you'll often see them spraying de-icing fluid over important parts of the aircraft, such as the wings, the leading edges, and the tail assembly. Normally, they'll use two different types of fluid. The first type is usually a heated liquid, which will quickly melt and wash off any ice and snow which has gathered on the plane. The second type is more of an anti-ice fluid, which is thicker and will sit on the wing for a longer time, to prevent any new ice or snow from forming. Then, as a plane heads out and begins to take off, the thicker liquid will simply be blown off the wing as the plane speeds up, so the plane now has a clean wing free of ice and de-icing fluid. Once in the air, an aircraft will have its own systems to prevent icing during the flight. Here are some of the most common ones. One of the most basic systems is an electrothermal system. This works like your basic electric heater that you might have at home. An electrical current is switched on and sent through key parts of the aircraft, such as the leading edges of the wings or the pitot tube, and it heats the structure so that any ice which has formed simply melts. Any of you who are fans of the Cessna 172, 
This is what the petal heat switch does. It heats up the petal tube so it doesn't get affected by ice. Another system which works very similar to this is a bleed air system. This takes hot air generated by the engines and pushes it along tiny tubes built into the surface of the wing, which are called piccolo tubes. This is quite similar to how a household radiator would work, but instead of having hot water, it's using hot air. Another system is the pneumatic boot, which you'll normally find on smaller and slower turboprop aircraft like a Dash 8 for example. This is basically a tough rubber balloon which sits over the leading edge of the wing. As the flight progresses, ice will accumulate over the leading edge. Then at set intervals, the pilots can inflate the balloon. This pushes out on the layer of ice that's formed which causes it to crack and break. Then the force of the air hitting the wing simply pushes this now broken ice away from the leading edge. The balloon is then deflated so it sits flush against the wing and the flight continues. Sometimes the balloon might have this bumpy shape when it's inflated. If you do a search here on YouTube for something along the lines of Dash 8 de-icing boot, you should be able to see some videos of the pneumatic boot actually being used in flight. And then one last system, which is known as the TKS ice protection system, which is becoming more common on small general aviation planes. In this system, the leading edge of the wing actually has some microscopic holes drilled into it. Then when the pilot activates this system, anti-ice fluid is pumped into the leading edge of the wing and will leak out through these tiny holes, removing and preventing any ice from building up on the surface. While it's good to know how to remove ice from a plane, surely it would be better to try and avoid ice altogether. So let's have a look at what causes icing conditions, or weather conditions where you risk ice gathering on the plane. So there's two things that will cause ice to form on an aircraft. The first thing to look out for are clouds, because clouds contain moisture or water droplets. The other thing which should come as no surprise is that the air temperature will be below 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So what are the best ways to avoid these icing conditions? Well, the easiest way is to simply avoid the clouds if possible. However, if this is unavoidable by having overcast skies, for example, where there is a solid layer of cloud as far as the eye can see, then there's two ways to work with these conditions. The first would be to fly below the cloud layer for the entire duration of the flights. Now, if this is not possible and you have to pass through the clouds, then you would simply take steps to activate any anti-ice systems before you reach the clouds and keep them turned on or active as you're flying through the clouds. Once you've passed the clouds and you're now flying above them, it would be safe to disable any anti-ice systems. Even though the air temperature will be colder at higher altitudes, there is very little moisture in the air which will cause ice to form. Now you may come across a situation where the temperature is below freezing and you fly into a cloud, however you still see rain hit the plane. Now you may see this rain and think, oh it's still drops of water, it's not a snowstorm, we're not flying through snow, that must mean that the temperature is above freezing. This is not the case. Water can become supercooled, which means that it does not turn into a solid, i.e. ice or snow, even though its temperature is below the freezing temperature. The problem with this is that when supercooled liquid does hit the plane, it will turn into ice. So the best thing to do, as before, is to have any anti-ice systems active while you're flying through these conditions. So that about covers the basics of icing when flying, so hopefully this video goes some way to explaining why the aviation industry struggles during the winter months. Anyway, looking ahead to my next video, I'm going to finally talk about flight computers and how they work within an aircraft. But until then, if you like what you've seen and you want to make sure that you get more videos like this in the future, then hit that subscribe button. But for now, thank you all very much for watching, take care out there and I will catch you all later.